In the year of 2021, there was a special forces exercise with all the other branches, but mainly one came into mind was the United States Navy SEALs, also known as the Derek Grew Unit. Now, a lot of them were questioning about is, hey, they don't have any Mark 18s or the 416, but specifically this type of rifle. Everyone's asking, what kind of rifle is it? Who, who is it and what is it made from? Well, in the state of Oregon, there is a company known as Novesky with their motto as the All-American Badass Rifle Company. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about is the CGS gas blowback rifle, Novesky N4. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Airsoft Master and today we're going to be talking about is the EMG Novesky N4 gas blowback rifle by the CGS system. Basically, we had questions about mainly what's a good alternative or maybe even a good starter for the gas blowback rifle situations that is more modular to say the Tokyo Marine MWS. Well, this may be your answer in regards of everything. So let's go ahead and talk about the features that we've seen here, starting off with the front end of it, and then we'll work our way all the way through the rifle like we always do. Now, one thing you'll notice in the rifle itself is this crazy polished style that you'll see of the barrel itself, with the tip of it being 14 millimeter counterclockwise threading, like what we did to actually put this nice little flash hider to go help out with this little nice setup for the actual suppressor unit. But other than that, it's also the fact that you can see that itself that you're able to thread any type of suppressors or any style flash hiders you want to put on this Novesky N4. Now, while we already talked about the actual barrel, let's go ahead and talk about the actual rail itself. Now, again, that one thing that we notice about every single military is mainly the fact that they want things to be lightweight. And also, when the same thing can be said about Airsoft. So, of course, what other than to make it lightweight and more higher performance than having an M-Lock rail system? Basically, around what the slots you have is at the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions to put any accessories such as we've seen here with the flashlights, the end gall, and as well to that, even the actual sling point and foregrip that you see on the bottom of the rail right now. I digress, and then we go ahead, and also one thing that the rifle needs and always will provide is the front and rear sights that you see out here. And as well to that, the rail on top on the 12 o'clock will always be the 20 millimeter Picatinny rail and monolithic to help give that nice real estate to help put any more accessories such as the optics you'll see here and even the backup sights that's already provided. Now that we've basically talked about the rail itself, let's go ahead and talk about the actual receiver head. Now, of course, you'll notice it's like a normal AR with your static controls being safe, semi, and full auto on here. As well to that on the left hand side. Sorry, lefties. But, as well to that, you still have as your standard AR controls, even the standard traditional design of the AR lower itself. But, this is where things get a lot more different in regards to Novesky. If you notice the different styles that go alongside with the rail, is it's more of a more tankier and more wider setup on here. It's also known as the actual billet style AR uppers. Now, I do like this is because of the fact that, again, it does make it more in a beefier setup tone and as well to that more durability and to the fact that it's more modular and more modern and that's something that we kind of do need since this is the AR has been what used since Vietnam era so I guess it's time for a new change and change is good now in regards of the licensed trade of course Novesky doesn't want to prove you like or miss out or any lacking of it of the actual insignia trades all throughout when you see Novesky all the way on from the lower end of the receiver, all the way up to the rail itself, even the fact that you have it on the actual forward assist. Attention to detail is pretty nice and also best way to flex on a most American badass rifle company. Hey, nothing wrong with that there. Now, while we flip it to the other side, now we get more into the interesting parts of it as well as we see Mainly the one thing that comes in important for my rifle and especially for Milsim guys is the attention to detail and also to make it more kosher The build is the fact that you have a 300 blackout dust cover Just like the actual Novesky rifles that you see out there There was two variants that actually for the calibers that you can actually use for the rifle which is the 556 and a 300 blackout Well, they made a good call on this one because this is what the one that they were using during the gravity unit at the same time for that special forces exercise and of course speaking about license trade we can't forget about it as well. It's even on the bolt carrier group and as well to that on your charging handle. Again, Novesky does not want to have you lacking on mainly on attention to detail of flexing your own rifle. 
mainly even in the gas blowback rifle airsoft community. So now that basically we talked about the trademarks galore on the actual rifle itself, let's go ahead and talk about the internals on here. Now, in regards of one thing that we noticed in comparison to the stock MWSs, is the fact that you can adjust the trigger box all the way through from the actual top of the trigger box and even on the trigger system itself to either help improve or remove the actual slack from the trigger itself. For example, this is our actual colleague's rifle and as well to that, let's see how it is on the, on the actual trigger pull. Let's go ahead and put it on semi. No slack at all. Now let's go ahead and do that reset. a hairline in regards to that which is actually pretty good itself for the help with the reset and also improve the actual trigger pull so again it is nice and one thing we did notice in regards to this when we were messing around with this rifle and actually doing research on it the fact that we were able to adjust the trigger as much as you can to make it even somewhat close to a binary trigger pull on the whole mechanism itself it's pretty good but i wouldn't recommend it too much like playing with it a lot now Again, it's just something that you want to do with your own rifle that can be a plus side. So again, if you wanted to adjust this, one thing we notice on also for research wise is the fact that we actually got a point to adjust it where this is somewhat of a binary system, which we don't really recommend in regards of using a lot. But again, it's just the option is there once you fine tune it just the right way to make it be almost somewhat binary. As well to that, basically, if you want to adjust it, all you would have to do is just break down the rifle itself on the actual back end, break it down shotgun style, and you can actually adjust it from there. Now, in regards to the internals itself, the trigger box is somewhat of a TM compatibility in regards to that as well. One thing we do notice is that the bulk carrier group that you're able to use is certain TM nozzles like we use on this one, mainly the fact that we tried out was the Unicorn nozzle. And for one thing that we noticed, it actually works really well. The fact to make it more TM compatible to use other than the actual standard Lancer mags is to use the mags that we've seen here, such as the Guns Modify. We'll get to that later in regards to that. But other than that, one thing that I will have to inform you about buying one of these rifles is the fact that if you're using the T8 nozzle on here, please, I highly recommend that you stick with the T8 magazines, as if you were to use the Tokyo Murray stock magazines, it would have a hard time in the actual receiver and itself and if you use like such as the other companies like Double Eagle or even the Guts Modify magazines you have a chance of most likely trying to rip the gaskets on the top end in comparison to the actual T8 or Lancer style magazines that EMG does sell. Now speaking about basically Tokimori compatibility or even the internals how do we get to it? Well just like any other standard AR or gas blowback rifle all you need to do is just basically break down the rifle using the rear pin, body pin itself, using a push pin and a hammer. So for example, once we do that, we break it down. This will basically break open the upper to, again, what's known as the shotgun style. And you'll be able to actually adjust, like for example, like I stated, the actual trigger pull on the actual trigger box itself or do proper maintenance such as the actual bolt carrier group and your charging handle. Now, as stated as before, is the one thing that is regards to compatibility wise that I would recommend is always changing out your actual nozzle return spring in regards to using green gas. But the fact that with the T8 system itself, that's already been done. So that's one thing that's already a positive. As well to that, now for the magazine compatibility itself, the main priority is basically the nozzle here, which we changed out for the actual unicorn nozzle for the actual MWS system. And it works and fixed everything flawlessly to help basically feed the magazines for Guns Modify or any other TM style magazines. But again, if you do not change that, you'll most likely cause issues in the gaskets itself, trying to use it with using the T8 system. If you're using a T8 nozzle, you use T8 magazines using the TM nozzle, just go back to the TM magazines. Now, basically here we are on the video to find is where's the hop up? Well, in regards to that, all you would need to do to get there is lock back the actual bolt carrier group itself. And once you see underneath is the actual hop up right inside the mag well. So what I would recommend in regards of doing this is basically having a long flathead itself 
to help adjust your actual hoppo tool. Yes, it does make it kind of somewhat inconvenient, but at the same time, it's also a little bit of a positive side due to the fact that you're able to have a more adjustable and constant hop-up adjustment compared to like the actual messing inside, going inside the actual magwell, like the TM one, when all at the same time it just gets moved around as a possibility. While this one, it's more stationary due to the fact that you have to use the flathead itself to actually fine tune to whatever BB you want to use. Now, in regards to the back end of the rifle, one thing that we do notice is the fact that you have is a six positional system on the buffer too. And as well to that, this the rifle that actually would come with it in yours is an actual trade stock. While our colleague did change it to the actual more than Magpul SL to make it that kosher death crew build. Another benefit that you'll also see in the back end of the rifle is the fact that you do have a sling QD sling mount in the back of it to help make it more of that two point or one point sling system on your rifle itself. Now that we already talked about hop up, let's go ahead and do the other important things as well is the fact that magazine compatibility. Now with your AMG Novesti N4, it's going to come with the 35 round Lancer magazines as you've seen here from the AMG side. And I have to admit, this is a pretty nice style in comparison to like using the standard standard magazines. And as well to that, let's see how this thing performs. It's pretty rugged. I will admit, it's pretty rugged. So it's, it's a pretty nice setup as well, and in comparison to like the actual stock M Big West, this does give it a lot more of a more better recoil. But as well to that, now I did say, again, if you do change your nozzles, you can make this a lot more TM compatible as well to that. It's because of the fact that this is a Guts modified magazine, and we did put in here is the Unicorn actual nozzle itself. So, what that means is, this also makes it TM compatible as well. Now, again, if you're going to change that nozzle, I mean, the one thing I would recommend is, again, keeping to whatever nozzle you're going to use for compatibility, mainly the fact that if you're going to use your TA magazines or your Tokyo Marui style magazines. Now, as well to that, the one thing I would always recommend in regards of it is the actual parts inside the bolt carrier group. Two parts of it that's going to basically be removed to actually install your nozzle, if you're going to do the unicorn way, is the fact that there's a little hammer assist in regards to that that threads onto the actual T8 system and as well to that the fact that the nozzle set from the unicorn doesn't use that little top end of the return nozzle that you'll see on the top end of the actual charging handle itself or below it. Now you would have to use the T8 system there and as well to that just the C clip to actually hold onto the unicorn nozzle once you install it from there. But again you can make it compatible as long as you basically choose the right magazine itself. Because the end of the day, what's going to cause is the possible chance of ripping your gaskets depending to which magazine you use and which nozzle you install. I'm using 0.20 gram BBs and regular green gas. So when we chrono the rifle, one thing we notice with regular green gas and 0.20 gram BBs is we're shooting on average around the 340 to 380 FPS. And this one basically ballparking around the 360 to 370. Now, this is actually a pretty good setup for mainly being an outdoor rifle. And as well to that, the fact that you are able to have the full fulfillment of basically doing the full outdoors compared to the actual Tokamari NWS that shoots around 350 and below. So again, Another plus side if you want to play that outdoor field such as SC Village or any other outdoor field that we have nearby. When you purchase a Noveski N4, basically it comes with the multiple items that you'll see here. Is one of them is the actual rifle and the magazine itself. An actual speed loader which is about holds about like an actual standard M4 magazine which holds about 200 rounds itself. And as well to that, their official licensing and actual certification that says that this is an official licensed rifle by Noveski which the back end a QR code to help out with your actual operations manual inside. So in conclusion of the actual rifle itself, is this something you would actually want to purchase to start off as a gas blowback rifle wise, or in general something an alternative to the MWS? Well before we go, let's go ahead and give a couple pointers that are the one things that are mostly important. Starting off with is, it's TM compatible with certain parts, like for example such as the nozzle itself, and as well to that, the adjustable trigger, which is again a benefit that you'll see then other than stock, where that's not able to be possible. And as well to that, the rifle itself. I mean, it's a good looking rifle. And 
preferably, I'm not really into as much tan, but for this kind of rifle, I kind of would give it an exception. Now, let's get to the price. Now, in comparison to a Tokimori MWS Sop Mod or even the CQBRs, going around the $620, this rifle is at the $500 market range during the time of this recording. Now, it doesn't seem that much as, yes, this is an expensive gas blowback rifle, but the fact that you can save $120, which can help you get maybe such as an upgraded inner barrel or other parts, again, it's a positive end on this route. But I digress on this situation. What do you guys think about the Action Bavesky M4 rifle? Or if you have a token brand MWS, how do you guys feel about the T8 systems itself? Drop a comment below. And also, if you're looking for products like these, like in airsoftmaster.com, just check us out on the website. But for now, my name is Mike. I'll see you guys on the next episode. This video is brought to you by Airsoft Master.